In this video, we're going to cover the physical and chemical properties of stereoisomers. If you have a pair of enantiomers, they will have identical physical properties. I'm talking about melting point, boiling point, solubility, things like that. The only physical property that they will not have in common is optical rotation, which we'll talk about more in the next video. They will also have identical chemical properties, and by chemical properties I mean reactions, so they will react the same way. Enantiomers are also difficult to separate and difficult to identify. So if you have one enantiomer versus the other, it's hard to tell them apart and separate them from each other if you have a mixture. Now, all of this is true for an achiral environment. If you are able to add some chirality to your environment, then this might change. For example, if you can add a chiral element to your reaction, then your enantiomers might have different chemical properties. Also, if you can add a chiral element to a separation, then you might be able to separate your enantiomers. If you have a pair of diastereomers, however, they're usually quite different. For example, they will have different melting points and boiling points. Sometimes these melting points will be wildly different, and other times they will be closer. They will also typically have different chemical properties and react a little bit differently. They are often easy to separate, and they are also often easier to identify. Of course, this isn't always the case. Sometimes you do have diastereomers that are difficult to separate or difficult to identify. But compared to enantiomers, they're definitely much easier to separate and identify. In our first example here, we have a pair of enantiomers. And you can see that the stereochemistry of this position is flipped. And we have the same boiling point. You can't tell them apart based on their boiling point. Down here, however, we have some examples of diastereomers. On the left here, these diastereomers have very different physical properties. You can see the boiling point of 60 degrees as compared to 47.5 degrees here. You can also see that this molecule happens to be polar, and this one is nonpolar. So again, very different properties. The diastereomers on the right here, however, have similar properties. You can see that their boiling points are pretty close here. And so even though they're different, it would probably be hard to tell the difference between these compounds based on boiling point alone. Let's talk a little bit more about chemical properties. For example, I have a pair of diastereomers here, and you can see that in a combustion reaction, we're getting different values. So the heat of combustion here for trans is different from that of the cis isomer. These values actually tell us that the trans isomer is more stable than the cis isomer because the trans isomer has a smaller heat of combustion, so it's releasing less energy. If you were to compare the heat of combustion of a variety of alkenes, you would see a nice trend here. So an alkene with four groups attached that is tetra-substituted is much more stable than something that is tri-substituted or has three groups attached. The di-substituted, the cis and trans, are right here. And you can see that trans is more stable than cis, and that was based on those heat of combustion values. And a mono-substituted alkene, or one with only one group attached, is the least stable of this group. Let's talk a little bit more about separating enantiomers. You can do a physical separation. And that's actually what Louis Pasteur did with sodium ammonium tartrate. He noticed under a microscope that there was a left-handed crystal and a right-handed crystal for sodium ammonium tartrate. And he got a pair of tweezers and was able to separate all the left-handed crystals from all the right-handed crystals. Obviously, this is a very tedious and painstaking way of separating enantiomers, so there are other ways to approach this. One thing that we can do is we can do reactions that convert enantiomers to diastereomers, and then you can separate the diastereomers and then have a reaction that goes back to reform the enantiomers. And we'll talk about this in future organic chemistry courses. Another thing that you can do is you can separate these molecules in a chiral environment, and that's kind of what I was getting at before. If you have a chiral molecule, it will interact differently with different enantiomers. One of the things that you can do if you're trying to separate a pair of enantiomers is to use a chiral separation method. Remember that your body can tell the difference between different enantiomers because your body is chiral. So, for example, if you have a pair of enantiomers, they might smell or taste differently because your body recognizes one differently than the other. What you want to be able to do in an exam is, given a pair of molecules, look at them and decide whether their physical and chemical properties will be similar or different. In the next video, we're going to talk more about optical rotation, which is the one physical property where enantiomers differ.